righteous in the whole Bible, is the righteous will be long, to re- long remembered. They do not fear bad news, for their heart is steadfast, trusting the Lord, knowing that he will take care of them. What does that mean, a heart that's steadfast, trusting? A heart that's laid down their opinion of the situation. Somebody else's opinion that's not coming into agreement with the Father and coming into agreement with with Him and saying, Father, not what I see, not what I think, not my opinion, but I speak your opinion and what you say into my life, into this situation, in Jesus' name. That is the picture of humility. Wow. And you know what? People looked at Jesus and they didn't think he was very humble when he walked around knowing who he was. Do you remember the Pharisees and how they came against him? You think you're so all that. That's how they were acting. And yet he had the humblest heart of a... He had the humblest heart. And you know why? Because he said, it's not me who says these glorious things about myself. I'm not saying these things because it's my opinion. I'm saying these things about myself because my father says them. And what my father says is true. And if I said anything other about myself than what my father said, I'd be as big a liar as you are. That's what Jesus said to the Pharisees that were coming against him, telling him that he wasn't who he said he was. Oh, yes, I am. And, and people would look at that and think that was prideful and arrogance. No, it wasn't. It was the greatest humility ever. Because he was laying down his opinion for the fathers. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I'm telling you what, there is no greater empowerment in all the world when you're facing somebody who's coming against you or bad news that's come against you, and you go to Jesus and you just say, Jesus, what do you say? What do you say? Empower me today. You may even be feeling weak in the moment, but empower me today with what you say. And he does. And then everybody looks at you in awe. You humbled yourself before God by laying down your opinion and your view, and then everybody else goes, wow. Look at your strengths. Look at your courage. Look at your confidence. And it's not even yours. It's Jesus's working through you, and yet people are, li- you know what I'm saying? They're lifting you up, and they're exalting you, and they're praising you, and they're- because that's what the Father said would happen. You humble yourself and lay down your opinion. You take on mine, and you will be exalted. I will make your life significant. You will touch people. They will see the light in you, and you will make a difference in this world. Just humble yourself. <sighs> this is a lot better than your response. I am telling you I'm about to explode up here and y'all are going (laughs) Woo! you're listening thank you I believe it it's going deep right you're seeing it you're understanding what I'm saying the true spirit of humility is to lay your opinion your will your view down And take on the king of kings. Woo! I just love you all. All right. Ephesians 2, 6 through 7. I want to show you from the scriptures that Jesus laid down his life, was a perfect example of humility in order for one purpose, and that's to lift us up. That's to lift us up. Ephesians 2, 6 through 7, and he raised us up together with him and made us sit down together, giving us joint seating with him in the heavenly sphere by virtue of our being in Christ Jesus. He did this that he might clearly demonstrate through the ages to come the immeasurable, limitless, surpassing riches of his free grace, his unmerited favor in his kindness and goodness of heart, Toward us in Christ Jesus. Wow. Jesus laid down his opinion. 
laid down his will, laid down and came into agreement. His will became the Father's will. His passion became the Father's passion. His desire became the Father's. You know what I'm saying? He came into, they were one in spirit and they were one in mind and he did it for the very purpose of lifting us up. He didn't think that his, his uh, identity, you know, sometimes people hear about who they are in Christ and it, with, with immaturity in their heart, not understanding that, they get puffed up. They become arrogant in their thinking, like, I know better than you. Yeah, I got the grace message and you don't. You know, and they get arrogant and they get... And, <laughs> well, it's true, isn't it, Lisa? <laughs> yes, we've all experienced it, you know. I know who I am, but you don't. Too bad for you. You know? No. The example that Jesus gave is we lower our opinion and we go, guess what? You're just as wonderful as me. Amen. You're just as good as me. You're just as valuable as me. See, I'm bringing down my opinion, my fleshly. Na- Let's just get real right here. When you see somebody acting badly, do you not have the temptation to judge them badly? Yes, yes we all do. Okay. Well, in that moment, when somebody is acting badly, guess why they're acting badly? They forgot who they are. The scripture says, a man who does not walk in God's ways is like a man who looks at himself in the mirror and then sees himself, sees who he is, and then gets up, walks away, and forgets who he is. That's why a person acts badly. That's why I act badly sometimes. I forget in the moment who I am. I don't need you to tell me how bad I am. I need you to humble your opinion (laughs) and your view of me and my bad behavior and start telling me, Connie, you're good. You just forgot. You're good. You're wonderful. That's what Jesus says about you. I'm not taking on my judgmental, critical attitude towards somebody. I'm taking on the Father's good opinion of you. Amen? And that's another beautiful way of applying this scripture, laying your opinion down. Just, oh my goodness. A few weeks ago, I have to tell you the end of the story. A few weeks ago, when I started this this message, I had seen a post on Facebook that just angered me. This person was exposing the sin of another person, and their sin was really bad, I will admit. But I was not, I, my judgment didn't go towards the one who, who sinned. It was towards the one who exposed the sin. And I was just, in the moment, my view and opinion of this person was not good. Guess what that was? Pride and arrogance. That's pride and arrogance. Do you see that? When your opinion and your view of somebody else is different than what the Father's is, that's pride. Okay, so you know what that did in my heart when I was having that negative opinion of this person and thinking, how could they do that? That is so not right. You know, she doesn't know anything about grace. Here I am judging, you know. And, uh, and I was so angry. And I know that when these feelings come up in my heart that I'm in disharmony with the Father, so I had to step back from the situation and say, Father, help me. I really want to say something here. And I know it ain't going to be what you have to say. And he helped me. I mean, in that moment, he helped me to humble myself and to say, Connie, it's not your opinion. It's not your judgment. It's mine. And I say that she's still wonderful and good. She's just forgotten who she is. She needs to be reminded of who she is. So I just stepped back, and, and in, like I shared with you a few weeks ago, Philippians 1, 6, and 7 just came to my mind and my heart, and I, and I was like, Father, you began a good work in her. You, you began a good work in her, and you'll complete that good work. And all of a sudden, all my judgment, all my criticism, all my thoughts of anger dissipated in the empowerment of the Holy Spirit as he began to show me his view, his opinion. And I was free. See, the other stuff brings you turmoil, pain, torment. But coming into agreement with the Father about somebody else's uh, identity (laughs) brings you peace. And I will tell you, I just, every time I thought about it, I would just say, thank you, Father, for bringing her into agreement with you. She publicly apologized 
on Facebook to everybody who saw that post and said, I was wrong, I wasn't trusting God, I wasn't living in agreement with him. I looked at that post and I, wow, Father, that's what happens when we come into agreement with you. And I saw other people on there that was telling her how good, even in her bad behavior, they were saying, you're good. We're, we're, we're with you. Don't, you know, don't worry about it. It's going to work. I mean, they were being, they were coming into agreement. I could see by their comments, everything they were saying, most of them. There were a few that were not agreeing with Jesus. And in my pride and arrogant moment, I wanted to like their post. I told you that a few weeks ago. But I knew that wasn't right. I, thought, I know that's not who I am. I know that's not what Jesus would do, and that's not who he is, but as he is, so am I in this world. And he always brings forth goodness. He always brings forth encouragement. He never condemns. You can be in the middle of adultery, and he says, I do not condemn you. You can be divorced five times and living with a man, and he can offer you living water. I mean, this Jesus that we are one with, only sees good when he looks at bad behavior. He only sees value and a treasure and a pearl of great price. He only sees a person that he laid his life down for, and he only has a good opinion. He never has a bad opinion. So if we have a bad opinion, we're not living in harmony with him. (laughs) <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Hi, I'm, I'm, up, I'm fired up today, ain't I? <laughs> Exposing my own bad behavior, my own negative thoughts, but telling you that if you come to Jesus and lay it down, he will transform your heart. He will change the way you think. He will give you a different perspective, and he will use you to bring his will to pass in that person's life. And that takes us to the next verse. <laughs> All right, thank you, Jesus. Humility. Humility is relying upon his grace to empower you to do what pleases him. Not relying upon yourself, but relying upon him. See, I tried that relying upon myself stuff, and it doesn't work. Listen to the scripture. It says, Philippians 2, 12 through 16. Okay, after... The Apostle Paul has talked about humility, what humility looks like. Humility is coming into harmony, one spirit and one mind. Therefore, my dear ones, as you've always obeyed, so now not only with the enthusiasm you would show in my presence, but much more because I am absent. Work out your own salvation with reverence and awe and trembling. Self-distrust. I love that word. With serious caution, tenderness of conscience, watchful against temptation, timidly shrinking from whatever might discredit the name of Christ. Okay, now if you just read that one verse, you can very easily get into self-effort, right? You can very easily go, I need to obey God so my life doesn't discredit him and my actions aren't, you know, true. Let's read on. For some reason, I stopped at verse 12 many, many times and didn't see verse 13. Verse 13 says, Not in your own strength, for it is God who is all the while effectually at work in you, energizing and creating in you the power and desire both to will and to work for his good pleasure and satisfaction and delight. Okay, not in your own strength. Who is it that creates in you the desire and the power to come into agreement with him? Because what pleases him? What pleases him? Agreeing. Faith is what pleases God. And faith is relying upon Jesus, coming into agreement with what is true of you and of others in Christ. That is what faith is. It is God who creates in us the desire and the power. Have you ever not really felt like coming into agreement with God? Have you ever just wanted to hold on to your own opinion? Yes, we all have. Jesus, help me. I need the desire and the power to come into agreement with you. Help me, Jesus. That's humble. That's being humble. 
And his grace is sufficient for all of us. Listen to this next part. I just love Do all things without grumbling and fault finding and arguing among yourselves that you may show yourselves to be blameless and guileless and innocent and uncontaminating children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and wicked generation among whom you are seen as bright lights, stars or beacons shining out clearly in a dark world holding out to it and offering to all men the word of life so that in the day of Christ I may have something of which to exultantly re- to rejoice and glory in that I did not re- run my race in vain or spend my labor to no purpose. Thank you, Lord. I can relate to the Apostle Paul. It's like he's saying, it's not in your own strength. It is God who works in you. To not grumble, to not complain, to not fault find. So that the world might see who you truly are. Who are you? You're innocent and blameless and guileless in Christ. That's who all of you are in Christ. So that the world might see that. You might be a beacon of light in a dark world. Why is the world dark? Because there's so many people that are in disharmony with the Father. That's, why, that's what creates darkness, is disharmony with the Father. What creates light? Harmony with what the Father says. Harmony with who we are in Christ, that brings light. Hold on to the word of life. Offer it to all men. Again, back to say what the Father says in every situation. But guess what? Don't do that in your own strength. See, if you just hear me say that, then you're going to go out this door and in your own effort try to say the right thing. But if you remember verse 13, And I'm going to tell you, when I got a revelation in verse 13, it was when I was in a very dark place with my relationship with my husband. We were in a lot of strife, a lot of contention between us. We had a lot of disagreements and a lot of different opinions. And we argued a lot, and there was a lot of strife in our home, and it it created very much sadness in my heart. And I remember when the Lord showed me Philippians 2.13 because I wanted to do the right thing. I wanted to live in peace. I wanted to, you know? But I did not have the power within myself. I would even say to myself, now the next time I have the opportunity to get into strife, I'm not going to say a word. I mean, I said that to myself probably a hundred times and I failed 100% of the time. I failed, and then I'd walk away from the situation and go, I'm a failure, I can't do this, I can't live a godly life. Maybe people think I'm living a godly life, but it's all a lie and a facade, and I'm just a failure. I mean, that's how I thought, because I couldn't get it right in this relationship that I had day in, day out, day in, day out. There was always this tension, there's always this strife going on. Philippians 2.13, the Father showed me, Connie, quit relying upon yourself. You don't need to rely upon yourself. I say you're good. I say you're wonderful. And guess what? I say Tony's good and wonderful too. Now look to me, and I will do the work in you. I will be the one that brings peace in your home. And I began to say, Father, oh my gosh, Philippians 2.13 was just like, boing. (laughs) I mean, it was like the answer to all answers for me. And it still is to this day because I even understand it deeper today than I did when he showed me it 25 years ago or 20 years ago, however long it was ago. I began to pray, Father, create in me the desire and power to do what pleases you. And you know what he began to do? He began to help me to lay down my opinion and my view of my husband and myself for his. That's exactly what he began to empower me to do. And I didn't even realize, that's why I said in the beginning of this message, I didn't understand that Philippians 2.13 is about laying down your view, your opinion, your will for the fathers. I didn't even understand that was the context of what Jesus did, of what the beginning of it says, come into harmony with the spirit, one mind, one spirit. But that's exactly what he was doing in me. And I began out of no, no effort of my own, no strength of my own, no, I, it, I, nothing of my own. My whole view and perspective of my husband and myself began to change. 
And instead of coming into an argument and a disagreement with him about different things, I began to say what God says. And harmony began to come. And peace began to come to our home. Because I would say, I can remember the very first time. I mean, it's like engraved in my brain. The very first time when me and my husband got an opportunity to get into strife and he said something to me that would potentially have made me just lash back out. You know, you fault find me, I fault find you. That's how it works. That's how it worked in the Witter household for many, many years. You point out my faults, I point out yours. Do you know how much turmoil and pain that brings? Okay, I remember the first time after I had begun looking to Jesus, Lord, do this work in me, help me. I can't do this on my own. I remember... The first time that opportunity came for me to fault fine right back, I remember looking at him and I said, you are so wonderful. And not because I heard somebody say, this is what you should do, and you know, turn, what does it say? Uh, Thank you, soft answer turns away wrath. Not because I heard that scripture, I heard it a hundred times and knew I failed at it most of the time. It wasn't because I heard that scripture. It was because... The Spirit of God was working in me as I asked him to work in me. And in that moment, I could see he was wonderful. He was good. He was a good man. And all those times, all I could think about was, he needed to change this, and he needed to change that, and if he'd only do this, and if he'd only do that. Do you understand what I'm saying? And all of a sudden, my mind, my perspective began to change. I was like, oh my goodness, he's good here, and he's good here, and he does this good. Because guess what? There's good in all of us. And when we can see the good and we come into harmony with Jesus, I'll tell you what, I have the most wonderful husband. I mean, I do. I mean, again, we almost came to end it, you know. It's like this is done. We can't deal with each other anymore. And now 20 years later, I look at this man, and he is so, so wonderful. I was thinking the other day about this passage of Scripture and how to, to put yourself down to lift someone up, to value someone up, so, value someone else. And I was thinking about all the times that he values me, that he will be at dinner and we'll each order something. And I might not like what I got and he likes what he got and he'll say, if you don't like it, I'll give you mine. I mean, it's almost like, who does that? No, I think, I, sorry about you. You got the red one, I got the good one, I'm eating the good one. <laughs> No, he doesn't think like that. I mean, that's just one example. But over and over again, you come to my home. If you come to my home, it's flowers everywhere. What man lays down his opinion and lets a woman put flowers all over her house? A wonderful, humble man. Do you see what I'm saying? This is a work that Jesus has done in him and he's done in me. He prefers me all the time where before, when before, no, I didn't feel preferred. I didn't feel appreciated. I didn't feel any of that stuff. But when I humbled myself (laughs) and came into agreement with the king of kings about what he saw in me and what he saw in him, the spirit of God empowered us both to begin to look at each other differently to begin to love each other differently, to begin to say positive and encourage things about each other instead of what we saw at fault. And he brought peace to our home because when you humble yourself and realize you can't do this thing on your own, you need God's help. You need his strength. And he's promised to create in you the power and the desire to come into agreement with him, to lay down your view, to lay down your opinion, to de- lay down your will, and to come into agreement with his will and his opinion and his view. And that is how we live in peace in this world. That is how we live in peace with each other. That is how we're empowered No matter what trial, no matter what storm, no matter what thing you go through, when you look to Jesus and you just simply say, Jesus, create in me, create in me, Jesus, the desire and the power to come into agreement with you about this situation in my life, about this person in my life, about myself. Help me 
to really believe that what you say is true. Persuade my heart, Father. Persuade my heart, Jesus. Help me. Because grace is the divine influence upon the heart that turns us towards Jesus, strengthens and increases us in Christian character of joy and peace and love and goodness. All of it coming by the Spirit. Because when we humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord, He will exalt us and make our life significant. Who's ready to give up their strength for Jesus' strength? Who's ready to give up their opinion for his opinion? Who's ready to give up their view for his view and their will for his will because they know his will is good? His plan is to prosper you, to give you hope in a future, to take care of you, to bring healing to you. His will is for you as his beloved child to prosper spirit, soul, and body in this world. And all he's asking us is to humble ourselves and ask him to do the work in us necessary to experience his good and perfect plan for our lives. Awake to Righteousness. You are qualified, innocent, forgiven, accepted, approved, and loved. Join Connie Witter as the journey through the Book of Romans continues in Awake to Righteousness Volume 2 and be empowered by grace to live a righteous life. Available now, Awake to Righteousness Volumes 1 and 2. Also available as a group Bible study package. Call 918-994-6500 or visit ConnieWitter.com to order or download your copy today. Because of Jesus Ministries introduces our first children's storybook, Are You a Chicken Head? by Connie Witter. This fun little book asks the big life question, what's true about you? Mommy, that girl called me a chicken head. Is that true, Victoria? Are you a chicken head? What does Jesus say about you? For many years, I have shared this true story to encourage others to believe what Jesus says about them. I pray this book will inspire parents, grandparents, and children alike to confidently respond. I believe what Jesus says about me. Order this delightful book today. Call 918-994-6500 or go online at becauseofjesus.com where Bible studies are always in the light of Jesus. Because of Jesus Ministries is your resource for grace-filled, Jesus-focused Bible studies and curriculum for all ages. Adult Bible studies, books, devotionals for girls and teens, DVDs, CDs, and MP3s. We offer group Bible study packages as well. Connect with us and check out our many free resources online at ConnieWitter.com, where Bible studies are always in the light of Jesus.